Yep, that's fine. I can uh, give you an email of it. Can everybody see? Um, again, I'm Steve Breuer. Uh, I represent Ecos Energy. Um, I, uh, I'm a civil engineer by trade. We um, developed and built um, over 23 projects across the United States. Um, Ecos Energy is a development arm of Alco Energy who does uh, all of the financing for the projects that we build. Um, we do own and operate all of our projects. Um, several of the solar developers will construct them, get them operational, and flip them um, to banks or lenders or other owned communities or, or um, own and companies. Um, we do not do that. We, we hold on to our projects and we own all the land that's beneath uh, our projects. Um, 
currently we have over 44 megawatts in operation uh, across the United States, uh, in California, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Georgia, and Vermont. Um, the majority of our projects are one to five megawatts, which is distributed generation, um, usually in smaller rural communities that is tied into the grid directly and sold uh, to the utility, um, either under a REC program, uh, mostly in the Northeast, it's uh, the ZREC, LREC, and SREC programs, um, which were uh, government determined and, uh, and released by the utilities for a bid process. Um, this is one of our first projects to be built in Indiana. Um, that is a one megawatt facility footprint, around seven to eight acres, depending on uh, how usable the land is. Uh, perfect square is the most efficient way to build things. Um, this is out in Atlanta, California, in the desert. Um, we built this three years ago. Uh, this is a one megawatt facility, about the same size of the project that we are proposing in uh, this project is in Bittner, California. This is actually a three megawatt site uh, with fixed field access and a single, single access tractor. Um, this project is in northern Vermont. Uh, we built this two years ago. Again, uh, two and a half megawatts here. Um, and most recent, this is one of the most recent projects. Uh, this is in Spencer, Massachusetts. Uh, this is our first construction in the Northeast. Uh, and that was done two years ago. Um, this is uh, almost a five megawatt facility. And, uh, and then most recently, one, some of you may have seen, uh, the project that we uh, developed and built uh, off of Route 32 in the town of Lebanon, uh, adjacent to Franklin. Uh, this project is uh, five megawatts. It's our biggest footprint that we've constructed yet. And, um, this project was approved by the Connecticut Siting Council because it was over a one megawatt facility. Um, the reason why I'm presenting to the town is the project that we are proposing is one megawatt or less, which is the threshold of uh, the Siting Council's <coughs> review versus local planning and zoning to review and approve these projects. Um, so the Plainfield Pike Solar Project, uh, it is a ground mounted solar facility similar to all the pictures I just showed you. Uh, one megawatt capacity. Um, there will be uh, 3,744 modules, plus or minus, uh, depending on the final electrical design. Um, this will be delivering energy uh, directly to Eversource uh, through the ZREC uh, program. Um, the property's life is anywhere from 25 to 40 years, depending on um, length of interconnection, uh, how we construct it electrically, for rebuild, uh, for future technologies, etc. Um, the project location uh, is a quarter mile east of 395 on 14A. Uh, it's a 22 acre parcel, zoned I-1. Uh, it is privately owned by our company. Um, there is historical evidence of some logging that has occurred on the site, but uh, currently it, it, it's undeveloped. Um, here's an uh, aerial view of the project uh, footprint. Um, and the, the, the solar modules are located in the back half of the parcel uh, in the upland area outside of uh, wetlands. Uh, here's the project site plan. It's somewhat blurry, um, but uh, basically broken up into uh, two portions. Uh, we'll be accessing the site actually through an existing driveway to the real properties. Um, we've already obtained easements, recorded them. Um, and the site will be split in two pieces, and the interconnection will be out at Route um, 14. Um, here's a close-up of the ground-mounted racking system. Uh, we haven't officially designed foundations, footings, all of that kind of stuff. Obviously, we, we need to get some momentum towards approvals. Um, currently, this is a driven pier system. Uh, we've done some subsurface excavate, uh, investigation, depending on rocks. Uh, that could be a driven sc screw, 
Uh, there's plenty of ways of doing it. Um, currently, we're actually um, building a ballast foundation as a six megawatt uh, at the Lebanon site. Uh, we're, we're attempting this to see uh, basically how we're going to construct our future, future projects in 2019. Uh, there's some positives to a ballast system because uh, we're not breaking the ground. Um, we don't have subsurface concerns of uh, rocks and other things that, that can potentially prevent uh, a clean and quick and uh, cost effective install. Um, the site will be uh, perimeter fenced um, and that is an NEC code requirement. Um, and all of our boxes and electrical equipment on site will be locked. Um, so if trespassers do get in, they, um, they still can't get to uh, things that could hurt them. Um, there will be a gravel access roadway uh, similar to this that will be reconstructed all the way from Leo site into um, our parcel uh, down the hill and, uh, and basically provide access to uh, the main transformer, uh, fire truck access to the site, um, as well as access to inverters and other equipment that is maintained. Uh, this is a typical equipment pad on one of our projects. Um, that's basically all of the main feeders from the, the solar facility will combine in that one box. Um, and then it's uh, upgraded and connected at the 12-4-7 interconnection that is uh, the Eversource interconnection that we'll be performing on that site. Um, our grid interconnection will look similar to this at the, at the road. Um, there'll be a reposer, which is basically a shared switch between us and the utility. Um, this will be like the main line down the street. Um, this recloser is, protects the site both from electrical spikes from the utility, so it doesn't ruin our equipment, and vice versa. So if um, we have an over voltage situation, that, that switch will, will shut down, um, or any sort of faults, etc. cetera. Um, as I stated, uh, we do have an easement in place this uh, drop tap area uh, with Leo properties. Uh, main reason is this topography falls off. Currently, they're ac accessing our site, or their site through ours, and we ask to do the same. It helps with additional, um, or alleviating additional construction, any additional wetland buffers or wetland impact, um, or alleviate it in, in that scenario. Um, benefits, impacts of the project, obviously renewable energy goals, uh, both with the state, town, some say the world, we'll get into that. Um, there's significant carbon benefits. Um, it's, a, it's a productive use of a fairly marginal piece of land. Um, that area of land is, is zoned industrial. It's set back. It has not the greatest access. Um, and the impacts are, are, are very minimal. And the use is temporary. We can still decommission the site when it's complete um, and use it for whatever industrial use um, we see fit in the future. Um, when it comes to adjacent homeowners, adjacent um, concerns from, from people that live near the site, um, there's, there's very minimal um, impacts to adjacent landowners. Um, the, uh, the site is hidden. Uh, there, there's no noise that is created from our inverters or transformers on site outside of probably the hum you hear in this room from these lights. Um, we don't produce a lot of waste uh, outside of during construction. Um, our traffic impacts are minimal, less than a residential home. Uh, after construction, we usually have O&M on site maybe two to three times a month, and sometimes two to three times a week, depending on uh, just general operation and maintenance elements of the project. Uh, construction is, is quick. Um, this project will be built in approximately two to three months. Um, and then we will completely decommission the site um, at the end of its life or repower it depending on the, the length of the red contract. Um, that's a quick rundown of the project. Um, I guess I open it to questions or, or 
So this is a public hearing. If there's anyone in the audience who has a comment or question on this application, if you could please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and then what your comment or question is. Is there anyone with questions on this application? My name is Kevin Cunningham, 405 New Supply Road. I have a quick question. Comparing this to what was the application for the 3.5, mm -hmm. and that was through the state, you're pulling this back to a one megawatt. The, the footprint, I just wanted to cross-reference the footprint. Yep, that's fair. All right. Um, so we basically have eliminated this wetland drop to the um, that was permitted. So this piece is gone. Can you show that on your projection? Yeah. Thank I you. Um, <laughs> so while you're pulling that up, I'll ask another question, just tying it back into the state yep. project. So there is no issue with the vernal pool, there is no issue then with the um, Weapons. Um, there isn't. Uh, one of the elements of the denial from the state is um, is concerns about uh, impacts to to the burning tools. Um, that's obviously a conservation commission element to be discussed uh, next week. Um, and. We have removed the wetland impacts for the crossing. Um, those were still permitted with the floor. Um, and we ultimately reduced the footprint to uh, a, a, less, a lesser size cost uh, interconnection at one megawatt. That's the reason why we're here. Um, is we can still get our project to, to pencil as it stands with an inter interconnection one megawatt, where obviously when you try to get three on the site, um, it wasn't cost effective for some of the roads that we had to build, um, as well as, as the, the city council um, found other determinations uh, why they did not want to approve it. Um, we did have to retain CLA engineers uh, to finalize the design here. They've implemented a lot of the vernal pool um, amphibious stuff in their uh, erosion and sediment control plan to this design. Um, so that's, that's our adjustment since the application to site council. Okay, I appreciate that. I mean, I have no problem with the site where it is. It's pulled back, it's off the road, so the original min is minimal impact there. My concerns were really just the wetlands and the understorted pool issues. So, I'll, because he's having a problem, leaving, you know, point that up. with a comment or question on this application. Rachel Slade, 300 Stockwood Road. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, so if the output of your system isn't going to benefit residents directly, it's just all going back to the grid, is that correct? Uh, it, it, it is, but I mean, it's one, it's it's electrons. Those grids, those electrons are going out to the grid, purchased uh, by uh, Eversource at a fixed fee for uh, the rec cost. Um, and then you guys are buying electrons. Now I can't tell you if you're buying solar electrons or electrons produced by XYZ or, sure. or what, but um, uh, that was the program that was incentivized by Eversource and we get into that program and we were awarded a con contract. Okay, and a one meg uh, watt system doesn't seem to be too large. The um, sun like here in Connecticut, isn't that great? Why don't you do a 20 megawatt where in the rest of the place where it's... Oh, we try. <laughs> <laughs> um, the price of power in the Northeast is expensive. I mean, that's that's the reason why it's appealing to developers. Um, it's why there's a lot more people. I'm from Minnesota. Um, we don't have as much solar on homes like you do out here. And, and the reason why you're doing it is because of the price of your power. Um, and that's why a one megawatt facility can still work out here for us. Okay. And um, just one other question. The, um, you mentioned that after the life cycle of the, the system, there would be decommissioned. Is that all in writing that the property would be completely cleared out afterwards? Um, it's something that we can work with with the town. 
Um, it is put in writing in, a fa in fashion with the Siting Council's approvals. Um, it's pretty typical to do that um, in the Northeast. And what's the typical life cycle? Um, the, the direct contract is 15 years, um, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't sell it on an open market or to a town or something like that after that. Um, so the life cycle is, is somewhat dependent on technology, um, but it can definitely be inked into um, a decommissioning plan of some sort. Uh, where at the end of that life cycle, that contract, you can re-explore decommissioning. Um, you know, there's recycled materials, there's a lot of copper on the sites, uh, those transformers are huge. So, so there's still a lot of value and raw materials that are on the site versus you know, just a bunch of glass solar panels that are 15 years old. Okay. Um, this is the old, the original uh, 3.5 megawatt Siting Council. Um, this system has gotten sm slightly smaller. Uh, this one's completely removed and this one's removed. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from audience members? Comments or questions from staff? This does have to go for the Wellness Commission, unfortunately, next week, so we cannot close both. Well. Regarding the decommissioning, will you be providing a decommissioning bond? Um, we could do that. We'll work with you on that. Any I don't know if you'd have a third party engineer reviewing that for us uh, or, or internal staff, but it's something that we can work with you on. Okay. Comments or questions from board members? Okay. So given that we have to wait for the wetland approval, um, we'll need a motion to keep this public hearing open to our January meeting. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, public hearing will continue into the January 8th meeting. Should I bring John back after the public Good evening. For the record, my name is Paul Archer with Archer Survey. 
um, representing the eight thousand sons. Mr. Couch is also in attendance here. If you have any questions, then it's Ladies and gentlemen, we have the rest of a meeting that we have to attend to, so if you can hold any sidebar conversations or just take them outside so that the record can clearly pick up the um, applicant's comments, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Continue. Thank you. Um, the parcel we're looking at is the corner of 14A and 12. It used to be the old um, Molson, Molson, I think is what it was. He was the um, CPA. It's right there. Now, we were... We were in front of this commission back in April of 2013, at which we had approval of this lot for, it was a 2,100 square foot, more of a bank style building with a drive through wraparound and all that for this lot that was approved here. That didn't quite, things happened, you know, wasn't going to be built. Mr. Couch owns this property now. Um, he is a builder, he is a contractor, so he, all he's looking to do is put a 40 by 30 garage in which that he can use for his own his own business put his trucks in put his plow in put his tractor in stuff like that and at the same time having a little trouble with the existing building that's there we're looking to add a 24 by 24 garage onto the existing building now um i have, a, I have some pictures to show you to deal with i turn this in and i got you know some comments back from Ryan, which I pretty much addressed most of them. And one of one of Ryan's concerns was, you know, his comments was DOT approval coming off of 14A. Back when in April we had DOT approval being both. Now, in on 14A, what I'm going to show you is that that what we're planning on using is an existing. Um, paper that's existing there. All right. So we're not looking to propose anything new anymore. Proposed than what's there. We had approval from DOT back when we were doing the bank for that to use that. So what we're proposing now is a much less, you know, less than we were proposing before. So that's what we're trying. That's what we're proposing there. The other one. Um, the other question that Ronnie had was the biggest concern was that on the east side of us, the lot that's up in this area here, this lot up here, that that is a that is zoned residential. Okay, we're in the, in the C2 zone, that's in the R30 zone. And according to your regulations that um, a buffer is required, a 25 foot buffer is required between any commercial and a residential zone. But what we're gonna show you is, what, this is how, this is how everything looks as of right now. And you can get an idea that what it is, that stone wall that's in the back there is a stone retaining wall that's back there. So that's probably a three or four foot retaining wall. And as you can see, the neighbor to the back has also put up a six foot high stockade fence in the back there. And you can also see, and you can also see the bushes, the um, natural vegetation in the front are all lilac bushes that wrap around that, that are wrap around the front of that there. So we're actually here's another. And so we're not really proposing right now any any buffer or anything there due to the fact that we're existing there. And the other problem we have is we really don't know how to handle that. If you already have a six foot high retaining wall and then you have a six foot high stockade fence up there, there, I don't know what we could possibly put there that would make any sense to that matter. You know, that would change anything or block anything to, to their view. Um, is, is this what you mean by six foot high retaining wall there? Yeah. Four, That's six foot high. Four foot. Oh, okay. That's four foot say. high. <laughs> it, this is a six foot high. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, that was one of the other questions, I think. And then one of the other questions that Ryan had was parking places, which we showed on, on the plan as we have four parking places for the garage. Due to the fact that we're not proposing any offices or anything like that, it's going to be strictly used for Mr. Couch and Mr. Couch to only in his business. 
where we're showing that the other 24-foot garage will be entered off of Route 12 on the existing pavement here. And this will give you a good idea as to what the side of the building looks like. That. So he would be he would be adding the the 24 by 24 garage off of where is basically where the truck is parked in that location right there. I think that, that, that's pretty much it. And like I said, he's doing the, he's just trying to use to utilize the, the existing property to the best that he could possibly utilize it. And the only thing that he has right now is to put you know a, a garage in there so that he can house his own equipment. So the two um, parking areas are not connected. That is absolutely correct. What we're proposing is a at the um, the westerly side of the end of this parking lot. You can see a, a graphic an area there. And there's a detail up top here, which is basically a stone trench that all the water that's going to come off the cave will be collected into that stone trench right there. Any comments from commission members on this site plan review? Comments from staff? My only concern is that the neighbors really shouldn't be required to maintain a fence in order to have buffer. And there really should be some sort of planting up there on the applicant's property to, uh, to screen in case that fence does come down in the future. Agreed. And I don't think the, um, the applicant has any problem working with staff as to determine what he feels would be the best type of plantings. I don't think a fence is going to do any good because I think to keep a fence down, all you're going to do is block the stone wall. But I think you'd be in agreement to, to work with, with Ryan and staff here as to figure out what the best planting would be to go along there. Yeah, we can do that um, prior to any uh, building permits being issued come up with some sort of vegetative buffer. I don't feel that a 25 foot vegetative buffer is needed to um, come up with some sort of evergreen screening. So that would be more of a 5 foot buffer? Um, well, the evergreens have a large thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. maybe, uh, maybe two staggered rows. And did you concur with the assessment on the DOT apron? Yes, we will be. DOT did allow for a bank for the drive through. Utilizing that existing paved apron along with the existing apron out on the 12. Uh, this is a level less intense use. We will need confirmation from DOT. They approved this prior to the building permits being issued, but we can work with them on that. So you can make that a condition as well as working with staff on the other two. Not the DOT. DOT approval, yes, you can make a condition that they will not get permits to build until that is. So that would be the CO condition, not the zoning no, application. No, site. this would be the zoning application. So prior to a zoning permit being issued to the applicant to build, we would need confirmation from the DOT that they approve the use. And prior to the zoning permit to build, uh, we would need to work with the applicant on the vegetative level. And then this would be kind of home base for the business. It wouldn't be a customer in and out type of business. Absolutely correct. Any other comments from staff or questions from commissioners? Okay, so it's a site plan review. Um, so if there's no other comments or questions, um, we can entertain a motion on the application. Do can we say? This is a site plan review, so this is not a public hearing because it's already zoned for the purpose that they're requesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a motion to approve and two conditions. Uh, one being that the applicant.